in the midst of all the craziness going on in the world, what is God saying to you right now? What is he asking of you? And Kristen, welcome to NBL. I want to get to your phone call right away here. Hi. Yeah, so what is it? Tell us. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I'm a, sure. I'm a very new listener, and I just heard your call to new callers or new callers and things like that today. So I, I wanted so to kind of touch called. base. Well, thank yeah. you. Um, it's, it's been a long journey for me. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm turning 38 this year. Um, spent most of my life being torn between um, divorced parents, um, different religions. I've had a lot of push and pull and do this and don't do that. And it really, even though I always felt a bit of a pull to God, I've always resisted. Um, I've often come close. Um, I feel like I'm being called now again to him. Um, and so that's kind of my calling right now. I actually picked up um, my first Bible that I've purchased on my own. Mm-hmm. I did that today, actually. Praise, really? Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm nervous. Like I'm <laughs> kind of sitting here shaking and I'm, I'm not entirely sure which direction I'm going. I am going to reach out to my father, um, who is Jehovah's Witness. Um, I don't want to specifically become involved with any particular religion per se, but I do want to get into the scriptures and learn what's expected of me and, you know, the things that can help me to grow and become the person that I need to be. Well, let me just speak from my heart for a minute. First of all, I'm thrilled to hear you say that. Jesus himself said, no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. It's from John 6, And I really believe, Christian, God's been at work in your heart and in your life through whatever circumstances you've been through, and he knows them all, and he loves you, and he desires to have a personal relationship with you through Jesus. And you mentioned having some spiritual background and stuff like that. Have you ever come to a place of putting your faith and trust in Christ? No, not entirely. I, there's always been that doubt. Um, I still have it. I'm not going to lie. I'm, mm-hmm. I still have, you know, a minor doubt. But the each and every time that I get called back in, and my dad has told me before, that he's not going to always just keep asking you to come back every time you, you deny him. Um but I feel like I keep reaching that point where I start to pray and I start to ask for help and it's presented to me. And then I turn my back on it because of the doubt and things like that, where I'm really, I'm struggling to push through that doubt right now. Um, I did, like I said, I did purchase a Bible today um, because I have been listening to your station for a few days now. And it's overrode all of the music stations that I used to play in the car because I've just, it's not been doing anything for me anymore. It's not bringing me out of that feeling of just, I hate to say it, but hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And I've been feeling like I've been coming out of that feeling of hopelessness a little bit since I've been tuning in and listening. And you've actually, there's been things touched on, like my relationship with my mother is not good. Um, There was abuse as a child and Mm -hmm. I've cut her out of my life several times and I've been struggling with that and praying on that. And it was weird. The moment that I turned on the radio yesterday, you were talking about that. So there's just a lot of things that Hmm. it's very overwhelming at this point, but I'm being called again. So I'm trying not to Uh, deny it this time. Well, can you just hang with me for a minute? Can we just talk for a couple minutes here? Um, Yeah, absolutely. I, It's no accident that you're calling today. It's no accident that I specifically said at the beginning of the program, we really want to hear from new callers and first-time callers. I I didn't have any grand, you know, word from God that I should say that. I just felt in my heart that, like, it was time to hear from some new voices and stuff. And so I, however God was working behind the scenes, I miraculously, I think he miraculously cleared the way for you to join the conversation today. And and I also want you to know that it's no accident that you feel pursued by him because he's a loving God who he's like a shepherd who goes after the lost sheep you know that the one that wanders away he goes to get why because he loves us we're of value to him and God loves you and he's desired a relationship with you for a really long time and you know uh, the gospel is I guess complicated to some who try to read the Bible and maybe feel like they're confused by it but it really boils down to this that God created us to have a relationship with him. And and we've been invited into that relationship 
Now, our sin is what kept us from him. It's what separated us from him in the first place. And at times, because we enjoy, you know, living life on our own terms, that sometimes keeps us from him. But at some point, it, it gets empty. And at some point, we get lonely. And at some point, we realize there must be something more. And we realize that he has something for us that is precious and it's miraculous. And he's, and he's inviting us into a relationship with him. The God of the universe loves us and literally came to earth, put skin on. That's called Christ, uh, Christmas, right, when Jesus was born. He came to earth, walked on this earth for 33 years, suffered and died and was punished for my sin and for yours and for all of our sin. Why did Jesus do that? Why did God come and do that for us? So he could rescue us from our brokenness and our separation and our sin. And so what he's saying is, Kristen, I love you enough that I gave my own life for you. I desire a relationship with you. Would you simply allow me to wash you clean, essentially by the blood I shed, meaning I, I paid it. The price I paid at Calvary was for every sin anyone would ever commit on this planet. Why? So everybody could be forgiven. And so that offer of forgiveness is for all of us. And he pursues us and he says, I love you. Would you come to me and allow me to wash you clean so I can have a relationship with you? The relationship we should have had was broken in the Garden of Eden. And it's been broken ever since. But it can be reconciled and restored the moment we put our faith and trust in the fact that Jesus died for us and shed his blood for us. And Kristen, in, in June of 1974, humiliated, having gotten caught once again doing something I shouldn't have been doing, Knowing full well as a young man, I was 14 years old, that I was a sinner separated from God. I asked Jesus to forgive me, and I asked him to come into my life and to change me. And I became a new person that day. Definitely not a perfect person. And I've struggled throughout my life to walk in obedience with God. But in, on that day, Christian, I was born into God's family. I became a part of something that I couldn't have ever known on my own except that Jesus did it for me. And I just want you to know that he loved you enough to go to Calvary for you. And he's inviting you into a relationship with him, and it's nothing to be afraid of. It's the most miraculous love story <laughs> ever <laughs> that he would <laughs> die for those of us who don't deserve it. I mean, he's extending forgiveness to us even though we're sinners. And I, I just yeah. I want to let you know that Jesus loves you that much. And, you know, the, the Bible says in, in John three sixteen that God so loved the world, that's all of us, that he gave his one and only son, that's Jesus, so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So the bottom line is this. We're separated from God, and we don't really know what real life looks like. We're kind of living as dead people on the planet, separated from God, disconnected from our Heavenly Father. But the moment we put our faith and trust in Jesus and ask for forgiveness, he brings us into his family. We don't have to be perfect. He begins the process of helping us to learn to walk with him and live with him. And I, I guarantee you, I've stumbled. I've fallen many times along the way. But something miraculous happened in June of 1974 that transformed my life. And God's inviting you into that same place. And um, I, I'm not asking you to join a church or anything like that. I'm asking you to say yes to Jesus if you're interested. Because it, it's really nothing more than asking for forgiveness of sins, that's why Jesus came. And by the way, Ephesians 1, 7 says it's in Jesus that we find forgiveness of sins. We get a second chance. We, we find redemption in Christ, the forgiveness of sins. That's what Ephesians 1, 7 says. And Lord knows we all need a second chance. So that's the first thing. And then secondarily, we ask him to lead us and to walk with us and to be our God and to, to follow after him because he knows what's best for us. He's the one who can help us from going astray. He's the one who came to find us in the first place, and he wants to bring us home so that we can be a part of his family and walk with him in relationship with him. So coming to Christ is nothing more than saying, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Would you forgive me? And Lord, would you come and take control? Would you begin to lead my life? I want to follow after you because I want to know what you've got for me. I've tried everything else in the world, and I've come up empty. Would you show me what you've got for me? And I, I choose to trust you today. So I, I'm just curious. I don't want to jump ahead of where God is in your life, Kristen, but I'm curious to know if you'd be willing to invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior today, to just come in and begin the work of showing you what he has for you by, first of all, forgiving you yes. and secondarily helping you to walk with him. Is that something yes, that would, would like interest that. you? Say it again. 
Yes, I would like that. Sorry, I'm incredibly emotional the last couple of days, so well, which is unusual for me as well. <laughs> you don't have to be ashamed of that. I'm emotional talking to you. I really think that this is a, a, a moment that God set up so that he can show his power. At the beginning of the program, Kristen, I prayed that, that God would show up in the middle of our conversation. I think he just did. <laughs> so so here's the thing. I, I'm, I'll go first. I'm a sinner, Kristen, and I needed forgiveness. So I'm just going to ask you a question. Do you think that you're a sinner who needs forgiveness? Yes. Okay. Well, I also have struggled with knowing how to do the right thing, how to love other people the way they ought to be loved, how to make wise decisions that are life-giving and not foolish decisions that are self-serving and stuff like that. I've needed the help of my Heavenly Father, uh, and so I asked for it, and it's made all the difference. Do you think you could benefit from having Jesus in your life to help you live the life that he has for you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, then putting your faith and trust in Jesus is not a, there's no magic wand. It's simply saying, Lord Jesus, when you died on the cross and you were punished and you shed your blood, whatever words you want to use, Lord, when you did that, you were doing it so I can be forgiven, so I can be washed clean. So, Lord, I want to be forgiven. Would you wash me clean? And secondarily, would you take control of my life? Would you teach me to live for you? And I just... Uh, I feel overcome with gratitude that you even called, Kristen, to to talk about these things. Because I want to ask, if you're willing, would you allow me and all of us the privilege of praying with you? And you just simply say what's on your heart about those two things. If you want forgiveness and you want to know God, then invite Jesus in. Lord, I want forgiveness and I'd love to have you come in. Is that something you think you could ask him to do? I think so. I think it's going to be, it's a challenge for me, but I, it's something that I do want to do. Okay. Well, um, I don't know how to put this into words adequately, but I, I, and I'm not, there's no pressure here, Kristen, there's no pressure, but I'm just saying like, um, when somebody asked me to go on the sky coaster at Six Flags Darien Lake, I didn't know what it was going to be like. <laughs> and I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. But I trusted that it was going to be a worthwhile experience. And in the end, I'm grateful that I did, I think. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The point yeah. is you, can, you can't know for sure what tomorrow looks like because you've never been there. But I think what you have seen is a loving God who's faithfully pursued you and said, Kristen, when you're ready, I'm waiting here. And, you know, the beautiful story of the prodigal son in Scripture is that he, like all of us, went off to do his own thing. He went and lived in sin doing his own thing. And one day he realized that he was just eating from a pig trough, like it wasn't satisfying. He wanted something better for his life. He wanted to go home to his dad's house. And so he got up and he turned around, and as he began to return to his father's house, he found his father running to meet him. That's a picture of the heart of God and his desire for our lives, that he would, he would pursue us like that, that he'd run to meet us, not to condemn us or tell us that we were rotten sinners who should have never done the things we did, he embraces us and says, let's throw a party because my child has come home. So if you're willing, what I'd love to have you do, Kristen, is just in your own words, ask Jesus for forgiveness. You don't have to be super specific. He knows what's gone on in your life. All of us have sinned. Yeah. And secondarily, invite him to take control of your life and use your own words to do that and, and say amen when you're done, and then I'll pray for you. But I... Here, here's what I know, is that there are many people listening right now who know that their lives were transformed the moment they finally said yes to Jesus because the living God took up resonance in their life and from that moment on said, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll protect you, I'll lead you, I'll guide you, I'll help you, and most importantly, I'll love you the way that you need to be loved. So if you're willing, ask Jesus to forgive you and ask him to come in and say amen, whatever that looks like. Pray it from your own heart, Kristen, if you're willing. Lord Jesus, I, I'm a sinner. I've, you know where my heart is, and I'm asking for you to please forgive me for all the sins that I've committed and, and all that I'm sure I will still commit 
unknowingly and help me to recognize those sins and correct them and to be a better person. And please come into my life and help to guide me and show me the way to your Father's kingdom because this world is not not what I, where I want to end up forever. And amen. Amen, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in Kristen's life today and for the joy of listening to the little one be born into your family. <laughs> She's my sister in Christ today, Lord, and, and you're her Savior. I thank you that when you died at Calvary, it was for Kristen's sin and my sin and Zach's sin and all of us, God. You saw it all, and yet you died because you loved us, and you invite us to know you personally. And Lord, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world today, and we make a lot of mistakes along the way, but I thank you that we have you to lead us that we're part of your family, that we have protection in who you are. And so our hope and trust is in you, Lord Jesus. It's you that we look to, and I pray for blessing in, in Kristen's life. It's not going to be an easy road. It's not going to be perfect, but you're there with us now. There are storms that come in life, but you're with us in the midst of them. You're the one who can say, peace, be still. You're the one who leads us and guides us through everything. So whatever tomorrow looks like, I thank you, Lord that you've taken up residence in Kristen's life. You said in your word, if we open the door, you will come in and you'll have fellowship with us and we will have fellowship with you. And so today, Lord Jesus, you're just not the savior of the world. You're the savior of Kristen. Uh, you're her Lord. You're her master. You're her friend. And she has protection and guidance in you and eternal life and forgiveness in you. That's something we can't manufacture in our own strength, but it's something you've done in her life today. And I pray that as a little baby in Christ, Lord, she'd begin to really grow in her understanding of what all this means. Can't, can't get it all at once, but Lord, you can sure reveal it over time through your word and through the things that we hear and see. Even in our conversation today, Lord, we're understanding more about who you are and how loving you are. So God, bless Kristen, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I don't want to freak you out, and I would have said it earlier, but there was about 300,000 people praying for you right there, Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and about 299,000 of them are dancing out of celebration. Uh, the other the other 1,000 are Baptists, and they don't dance. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that is so great. That is so cool. Listen, well, we want to help. Well, thank you for being a part yeah. of my journey. <laughs> Yeah, and we want to help you however we can. I, There's no pressure here. If you want to give any information to Zach about how we can reach out to you, uh, I'll tell you this. I, we know and I know an awful lot of people in the St. Catharines area who know and love Jesus who are kind and not overbearing and stuff. Um, one woman coming to mind right now that might be an encouragement to you down the road. There's no pressure on that. You don't have to join anything. I've actually been praying for somewhere. Like, I, I don't know where to go for a Bible study. I was asking at the okay. store today and things. So well, see, I would appreciate that. Yeah, God is stirring your heart. And uh, I will be more than happy to, to use whatever connections I have uh, to, to help get you in contact uh, with some ladies that can really speak into your life, Kristen. What a miracle. Thank what, you. A, what a joy. Happy birthday, oh. sister. <laughs> that is so awesome. All right, let me put you on hold. We'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. Thank you for your phone calls. We will continue. Pray for Kristen. How great is that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so good. Just had a feeling you were up to something special today, and none of us were wrong about that. 